Hi everyone, my name is Peter, and thanks for joining me at Our Worship Sound, where we're making worship keyboard technique and technology easier. I want to talk about some of the obstacles that we face as keyboard players trying to play melodically on piano or improvise melodies, kind of filling in in between stuff, and talk about some of the solutions that are that seem logical, um, but actually turn out to be not the best solutions. And we're going to talk about what I think is a better process for doing that. So first of all, one question that we have is, when do we play melodically? And one logical solution to that is we could just play the chord and then play melodically in between. Here's what that kind of sounds like. And I actually kind of find that challenging to do. For one thing, you have to kind of switch back and forth between I'm playing chords and I'm playing melodies. I'm playing chords and I'm playing melodies. And it gets to be a lot to think about. One of the biggest limitations of this, though, is what it does to our rhythm. And it really limits us to a certain uh, types of rhythm because we're usually going to play a new chord on beat one and then we have a little bit of space, and then we start a new rhythm, and it's going to end up being like the same types of rhythms that you're playing all the time. And so that is a logical solution, but it ends up being pretty awkward. Okay, and now another solution would be uh, to the question, what do I play? And a logical solution to that would be, well, let's just take the major scale. So in this progression, it would be that major scale. And let's just kind of forget about chords and let's improvise with all of these scale notes. So here's what that might sound like. So some limitations of this one. One, you'll notice I stayed really close in just this small range. And I think when we're trying to fit a lot of notes together, it doesn't really allow us to break outside of just trying to fit these notes together. Another real limitation is that I'm just kind of guessing it's what, what's going to sound good. It's not a very thoughtful approach. It's also not very thoughtful about rhythm. So I'm just trying to throw a whole lot of notes in there and not getting really a lot of attention to rhythm. And then the other solution might be uh, how and when to play. Uh, we could just learn a whole bunch of different melodic ideas or riffs, and we kind of have our go-to um, things that we can play melodically. So let's give a couple of examples. Let's say I'm going to do something like this. So that type of melodic idea. And then one that I actually really like is... So let me play this progression again. I'm going to work in these two melodic ideas in there, and we'll see how it goes. So problems with this one, uh, there's there are times when your riff is going to sound better than other times. So it's not always going to fit. Um, the other problem is that until you have a really large collection of things that you can go to, you're going to keep repeating the same sorts of things, and people will listen to you and, and be like, oh, there's their signature riff, and, and they're going to wear out really fast. Um, and so that's probably there's a lot of limitations to that approach so these are all three very reasonable ideas but they end up being awkward um, not being the easiest thing to do not sounding very good so now i want to talk about a process that i think works better it's going to sound better and it's going to be easier for us to play it's going to start with the left hand okay and so when we think about when do we think chords when do we think melodies this is going to put all the responsibility for playing the chords on the left hand so and not even playing all the notes of the chord but just some of them so for every one of these chords we're going to outline them with the root and fifth so for b flat it's going to be b flat and f for e flat well i also have the b flat for g minor the g and d and then c it's going to be those two notes and then because that f happens pretty quick i might just grab the root of that chord but let's hear how this just the left hand part sounds together with a simple rhythm Without the track, it sounds like this.
So even playing just those two notes from each chord is plenty for the listener to have a really good foundation of what the chord progression is doing, what it sounds like, where these, how these chords are functioning together. That's enough to carry the chord progression and allow our right hand to kind of forget about chords and just to focus on playing melodically. The next step is really important, and this is something that I talk about a lot. Um, and in the, the course that I'm kind of leading toward, um, this is going to be practiced a lot. We need to get really good at this, and that is identifying the key and the scale for this chord progression. So what we do is we take these chords and we plug it into our system, and we're going to find that these chords fit within the key of B-flat major. Once we know that, we're going to look at the B-flat major scale, and we're going to learn that that has two flats, B-flat and E-flat and then the other notes are just gonna go up according to the musical alphabet, so B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And then just putting those flats in there. So we're gonna end up with B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat. So that's the scale that's gonna allow us to play melodically in this chord progression. But we're not even gonna worry about all of those notes, we're just gonna deal with two of them to start with. We're gonna deal with the first scale note and the fifth scale note. So B flat and F. And these are the notes that we're going to use throughout this whole progression. We're not going to change them based on the chord. We're just going to look at the overall scale and the key, and we're going to play these two scale notes. Now, what this is going to allow us to do is to branch out and do some other different things. Let's first of all find where these notes, where we can play them. Okay, so we can play them here, up an octave, way up here, even way up high. Now, you can also play them one note at a time. Uh, two notes at a time, you can play them in octaves, you can play them three notes at a time. So it gives us a lot of flexibility even with just those two scale notes. So, and this is going to sound good, okay? So trust me on this. Now, I'm, I'm going to play this two different ways. I'm going to play with kind of a typical chord approach, and then I'm going to switch and go to just playing B flats and Fs in my right hand, carrying the chord progression in my left. So first of all with chords, and then with the first and fifth scale notes. Here's the chords approach. Now first and fifth. I don't know about you, I'm gonna play that second approach almost all of the time. Now, in all fairness, there are some things that I could have done to make the chord progression sound better uh, with the way I played it the first time, but I think that's a fairly typical approach, and I think that there are a lot of keyboard players out there who, if you will switch gears from playing your normal chord approach to just playing the first and fifth scale notes, you're gonna improve your keyboard playing and your sound dramatically right away, and it's easier to do as well. So even just doing something very simple like that is going to lead us toward a stronger sound. Now, I'm going to talk about some of the other advantages of what we just did, but first of all, let me kind of walk you through quickly the rest of the process where I would take you. So after we're comfortable with the first and fifth, we can add the seventh scale note, and that actually opens up a lot of a lot of melodic possibilities. From there, we can also add the second scale note. So in this case, we'd be talking about C. So with these four scale notes, and again, playing them anywhere, we can play all of these notes at pretty much any point during the chord progression, and they're gonna sound good. So this gives us a good uh, number of notes that so we have options, but not overwhelming, and it just really allows us to get into that sort of melodic flow. Let me just take one pass using those four scale notes, the one, two, five, and seven. And I did cheat and use one extra scale note in there. I don't know if you caught it, but anyway, that was almost almost all with just those four scale notes and it gives us a lot of flexibility. From there I like to add just a little bit of color to the mix and add the third of some of the chords, not of the scale but of the chords. Okay, so there, that adds a couple more notes into the mix and then finally we do put some notes together in specific patterns or I call them sequences um, but nothing overwhelming, it all stays really simple and uh, it's just a really good, I think, solid approach 
for you to, to jump into playing melodically. Let's talk about some of these advantages just as we back up even just the, the first and fifth scale notes. Okay, so first of all, you'll notice that it allowed me to jump outside of a small range. Okay, and it made things much more interesting right off the bat just because I wasn't just stuck in a small range of notes. I also had a good idea that what I was gonna play was gonna sound good, I wasn't guessing. Also, one of the biggest things is this allows me to be much more thoughtful about my rhythms. And that's huge because it's such a big part of our sound, the rhythms that we choose. If I go back to just focusing on the first note and the fifth note of the scale, it allows me to take whatever rhythmic approach is going to fit the best. I can do something really basic. I can do something that's a little bit more rhythmic and syncopated. And I can do something that is maybe more of a soloistic type of approach. So let me play all three rhythmic approaches that I just talked about. And um, we're gonna start with just something really basic. Now something more rhythmic and syncopated. soloistic. So again, just playing with a small number of notes allows me to be much more thoughtful about the rhythms that I choose. One major advantage of this is that it makes it easier to play in keys that I'm not comfortable with. So if there's a key that has a lot of sharps or a lot of flats and I'm not used to it, simplifying it down to this is going to allow you to sound good, be accurate without overwhelming your, uh, your process. So let me try this in the key of B. So I'm going to take everything up a half a step. I'm going to focus on playing B and F sharp and then just moving these chords up half a step. One, two, three, four. So that's a really good approach and nobody's going to complain about you playing something simple if it sounds that good. Finally, if I have to sing at the same time as I play or maybe I'm the music director and I have to pay a lot of attention to what's going on in the rest of the band, I can't devote 100% of my thoughts towards my keyboard playing. I have to be able to pay attention to other things as well. This is a really good way to simplify this down a little bit make sure my keyboard playing is solid, but able to make sure that what I, what I the other things that I'm doing are gonna sound good too. So lots of advantages to this. It's gonna make you a lot more free in what you play on the keyboard, not limited, and it's a really approachable way for you to go about it. If you're interested in learning more about these techniques, I do have some courses available, uh, including the new Fluent Piano Melodic, and you can check that out at fluentpiano.com. I will have some more videos coming out on these topics soon, so make sure you subscribe for updates on those. And uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.